Hello and welcome to Volt Vehicles. In this video, I wanted to talk to you guys about what are the pros and cons of using derailleur drivetrains versus internal gear hub drivetrains for Bafang motors, the mid-drive conversion kits that you can get on the market here. So if we start off with like just some of the benefits of each type, if we start off with the derailers here, and I, this is going to be on a bit of a basic level. So for you, so maybe some people will find this a little bit too newbie level, but this is just so that everyone can get on the same page here. Derailer drivetrains are then these different cassette cogs you've got here in the back that allow you to have different gear ratios. So you can see here, the chain here is on this gear here, which I believe is gear six here. So this is then gear seven and this is gear eight. So then the derailleur mechanism then moves the chain to these different cogs and allows you to get a different ratio of uh, cog teeth compared to the front cog here. And then in this works, it's then changing your gears. So each one of these represents one gear. So this is gear one, this is gear two, this is gear three, etc. Uh, the way the internal gear hub works is that this only has one single cog here compared to the eight cogs we've got here. But the thing is, with the internal gear hub, it's got many tiny gears inside this hub. So this hub then has many in tiny gears and this is controlled with a cable then, which goes into some form of control or some form of a pulley mechanism, which goes inside here. So the gears inside here are adjusted so that it changes the ratio that this cog here has so this race this cog maybe has to turn two times and they'll make the gear hub spin maybe one time or maybe it'll spin half a revolution this gear hub and then in certain gear it'll maybe spin a whole revolution the point is that all the gears are in this hub that's why it's called internal gear hub that is because we've got no external gears here so everything is taken care of by the internal mechanism we've got here so this here is just a little picture just showing how some of these gear hubs can look like like you can see it's like a hub and then on the inside we've got lots of small moving parts here generally speaking when it comes to the internal gear hubs these are seen as more reliable gear systems compared to the derailleur drivetrains these are seen as being the less uh, uh, less risk of them uh, uh, getting broken less risk of them taking damage to the weather and the elements and this is because all those gears are encapsulated in this uh, hub here so the hub then is then what the the wheel is then attached to so generally speaking, reliability goes for the internal gear hubs because here you've got this derailleur mechanism, everything is exposed and then this thing has to be tuned to be able to switch the chain on these different cogs here. So everything is external. So in a way, you could say the reliability goes to these guys. Uh, and then what is then another benefit or alteration between the different two types of gear systems? Well, a benefit of uh, the derailleur mechanisms that you get a bigger gear range now often people who don't know a lot about bikes will think like oh look at my bike has got nine gears mine's got eight gears mine's got 21 gears wow i've got so many gears in actuality in my personal opinion when i'm riding a bike that does not the amount of gears doesn't mean so much rather it's the range of gears and what do i mean by the range of gears well i mean that the smallest or lightest gear the lightest gear the easiest to pedal gear is very like the difference between that and the hardest gear the toughest gear the difference between th those two is why it's called the range of gears so like say if the the now this is going to be a bit confusing here because the biggest cog is what is considered the lighter easier cog to move here so the gear one here is going to be easier than the smallest one that is going to be harder so the difference between the smallest and the biggest one you you say that you've got a gear ratio so it maybe is like 200 300 percent which means like you can go from gear one to gear eight you can increase the toughness by like 300 percent in a way and the same way works for internal gear hubs uh, the smallest gear maybe is a certain amount of revolutions required to turn the wheel and then it requires a bit more toughness in gear three for example and the difference in revolutions required to uh, like all the difference in toughness between the smallest and the or the lightest and the heaviest gear is in the gear range of the gear ratio so the point is when it comes to the derailleur drivetrains these guys have very big gear ratios meaning that they're able to have like a very big difference between the smallest and the biggest gear like the you if you want to be able to climb a hill really easily you'll have a real easily time with a derailleur to be able to have a very very light gear and if you want to go really fast in the same bike you'll be able to then have a very very tough gear when it comes to the internal gear hubs 
there's less difference between the different gears and it's just an inherent uh, downside to the way they're built so usually you're going to be able to get bigger differences in your gears here allowing you to be able to go on different terrains a bit more so maybe someone with a derailleur mechanism is able to climb steeper hills than someone with an internal gear hubs and the same person with a derailleur is maybe able to go a little bit faster or being able to pedal faster than someone with the hardest gear in an internal gear hub you've got a bigger range of the gears now the amount of gears can vary but the point i'm trying to make here is that that is a benefit of the cassettes or the derailers they're able to have a bigger gear range. okay when it comes to the mid-drive conversion kits the buffan kits the same rules apply here you're going to have easier time getting bigger gear ranges you're going to have better hill climbing capabilities with the cassettes and then you're going to have uh, or the derailers and then you're going to have worse hill climbing capabilities and less top speed with the uh, internal gear hubs and the same thing applies you're going to have a little bit better reliability with uh, the gear hubs and you're going to have less reliability with the derailers they're going to have to be tuned a bit more often and more risk of something uh, breaking here one big consideration i think that people need to t uh, to remember when uh, doing uh, mid-drive conversion kits is that with the, when it comes to the derailleur mechanisms it becomes a lot more demanding on the amount of extra appliances you need to add because here you're going to either have to have some kind of brake cutoff which is going to enable you to then shift without having a load going on or you're going to then have to have a gear shift sensor which is then going to temporarily cut off the motor when you're switching gears the reason is because you can't press hard on the pedals when switching gears it's not going to work but you need but at the same time derailers require you to pedal a little bit a little bit just a little bit just to, to give it enough force to switch the gears but not hard and that's the problem with the uh, motors that you can't really especially the bafang motors you can't control as much the force you want that's why people have the gear shift sensors as we can see here these temporarily cut off the power when you're switching so then it allows you to have a bit of momentum while switching gears so that you can switch gears properly and then another option here is that you want to have a brake cut off so that you're able to uh, then use the brake to cut off the motor and then you're going to be able to switch gears here so that's also an alternative here but the the point is all these are not required brake cutoffs and gear shift centers you do not require these with the internal gear hubs the reason is because internal gear hubs they're able to switch the gears while you're not pedaling so you just have to stop pedaling wait until the motor turns off and then just switch gears it's not as complicated as with the derailers because the derailers require you to have no motor power but at the same time a little bit of extra momentum to switch the gears here that's also a benefit of the internal gear hubs they're able to have the gears switched when in, in a stationary position so for people who want simplicity it's also a very good benefit of the gear hubs because say you just suddenly stop and you're in a very high gear you can just quickly switch the gears something you can't do with the derailers because you need to be able to pedal a little bit you don't need to pedal hard but just a little bit to be able to switch the gears so for per people who like to do urban commuting and uh, you're going to like go, do lots of frequent stops and starts then you're going to want to have the gear hubs because it also just makes your overall experience a lot easier when it comes to the bafang motors the same thing uh, is uh, a consideration being able to switch gears when stationary in the gear hubs when it comes to the bafang motors the fact that the internal gear hubs are able to switch their gears stationary is a big benefit because it allows you to not have to have gear shift centers or brake cutoffs less complicated in terms of the build but the same pros and cons of, of internal gear hubs versus derailers apply now when it comes to the actual pricing that's also something you need to take into consideration and also availability availability and pricing is a lot worse for the internal gear hubs usually internal gear hubs cost a lot more than uh, the uh, cassettes and the derailers depends a little bit which type of derailleur and which type of cassette and which type of internal gear hub but generally speaking here you're going to have to spend more money and also it's going to be harder to uh, acquire it so it's, i find it generally speaking very hard to find internal gear hubs for sale versus cassettes you find all over the place uh, it's very easy to mount them if you want to the ease of install if you want to install a new internal gear hub then uh, it's going to be a hassle because you're going to have to rebuild the whole wheel meanwhile if you want to install a cassette or a new derailleur it's going to be no problem but that's then if you want to install a new gear hub many uh, bikes already come with gear hubs uh, on them installed and those is not going to be any problem with the install but one thing that i think is very important to know when it comes to another thing with the gear hubs just generally speaking when you're out there buying some buying advice here is that 
often bikes, especially the uh, commuting or city bikes, like these uh, Holland bikes, you know, these just generally speaking bikes that are very common to have gear hubs, they very rarely have brakes actuated by the handle grips. They usually have a coaster brake. Uh, so the, you see this gear hub here? This has a disc brake, so that's good. But you can encounter many of these gear hubs, especially the Nexus 3s, which are very common to be found on uh, city bikes. They'll have coaster brakes. They'll not have any rim brake, no uh, disc brake or anything. They'll just have the coaster brake. And the problem with the coaster brake, it, the, if you guys don't know what coaster brake is, is when you pedal backwards and you brake the bike, this is not able to be used when you're using a Bafang motor. Keep that in mind, because you're only going to be stuck with the front brake. So either you're going to have to make sure your uh, your frame has got a rear rim brake, or you're going to want to have a new hub that has and a frame that's compatible with disc brakes or drum brakes or something else that is able to be actuated by the handle grips, because that is not possible uh, with uh, Bafang motors. You can't use coaster brakes. Uh, meanwhile, on cassette-based drivetrains, they they can't have coaster brakes, so they'll always have uh, rear brakes. Meaning, generally speaking, these are going to be a bit more friendlier to conversion in that way. That you're always not going to have to think too much about the brakes here. You have to really consider, like, okay, is this gear hub has it got a decent brake? Has it got any? Has my bike got any rear brake? Has it only got a coaster brake? Yeah, then I wouldn't recommend actually converting it because it's not so safe to just have a front brake. You need to have two brakes, in my opinion. So that's just something to remember that many of these uh, low tier Intel gear hubs don't have handlebar actuated uh, brakes. They usually have coaster brakes, which is not good for the fan conversion because they can't utilize it. So keep that in mind. So if we're going to summarize here, internal gear hubs expensive cassettes cheap cassettes big gear range so you're going to have better hill climbing capabilities and max speed uh, internal gear hubs are not going to have as good top speed and are not going to have as good hill climbing capabilities compared to a cassette uh, internal gear hubs they're a bit more reliable they have less likelihood of the elements the weather or everything getting inside and affecting the gears and the shifting mechanism here everything in the cassette is exposed more prone to having to have a re re lots of adjustments but also remember if you want to replace a part cheaper compared to the gear hub and then installing is usually going to be a bit easier for the cassettes it's usually going to be harder if you want to have to rebuild the whole wheel unless the hub is already on the bike and then just remember that um, you need to have a, a hub that is compatible with a rear brake that is actuated at the handlebar, not a coaster brake, because that's not going to work with your kit. Uh, another thing to remember is also that if you are able to get a gear hub that has got a, a, a handlebar actuated brake, then the overall install process is going to be easier because you don't need a gear shift sensor and you don't need to have any brake cutoffs, actually, because the, you don't need to think too much about that for shifting. And then also another big benefit of the gear hubs is that they're able to be shifted when stationary. So it makes you have to be a very smooth time when shifting in the city, for example. And one thing to also just remember uh, that I've not mentioned is that the gear shift sensors, they've also got a bit of a downside. They can sometimes make shifting a bit worse. In my experience, the friction here can affect the shifting capability as well because there's a bit of friction here. Now, if you really, if if it's completely clean, nothing, then there shouldn't be any problem. But if a bit of dirt gets in here, you can have problems with shifting. So just keep that in mind as well. So that's my comparison of the internal gear hubs and the derailleur drivetrain mechanisms for uh, Bafang conversion kits. Hope you that uh, helped you and uh, hope that you learned something new from that. If you did or if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.